So how you doing? Uh, today we are sitting underneath my pickup, or kind of in the wheel well. Guess what I found? Uh, hey, it took me 20 minutes to get this drum off. Let me show you. So, I mean, the drum was stuck on there like a mother. Took a bit of effort to get it off, but I got it. But as soon as I got it off, Look what fell on the ground. See that down there? Yep. Here, take a look at my uh, brake shoes. There's that side. The rear side. Here's the front side. Front side looks better, doesn't it? I knew there was something going on. Uh, the other side's leaking but we haven't got that far yet. Now, I uh, I kind of planned ahead and I ordered all new spring, the spring hardware quick kit and everything with new shoes and uh, new drums. So I think the hard part's over. Now it's just a matter of swapping out parts. Alrighty, let's get on with this. So what do you think here, guys? New wheel cylinder. New springy springies. He was a little horseshoe looking clamp thingy. Got the small shoe on the front. Got the big shoe on the rear. Even got a new adjuster in there. I even managed to put some of the, uh, the, uh, the only substance known to magically transport itself from whatever you're applying it to, to somewhere on yourself. I'm sure you know what that gray substance is right there. <laughs> Don't matter what you put it on, it always ends up on you. There she is. Everything seems to be functioning correctly. That's one side down, another one to go. So, I'm working on the truck, and, you know, I decided it's getting late. Let's hang her up and wait till tomorrow. Well, today is actually tomorrow. And guess what? It is 7.30 p.m. I'm walking out of work, and guess what? That sun's gonna go down here soon. I got dinner waiting on me. I don't think it's happening today. So, Hey, let's go again. Maybe it'll happen tomorrow. All righty. So a little update on our firewood logs that I've been waiting so patiently on. The gentleman I was trying to buy logs from, he has not delivered the logs yet. I've called him a few times, you know, just enough to try to keep him from forgetting about me, if you know what I mean. But uh, he doesn't return my calls anymore. So, you know, so I contacted other companies and guess what? No return phone calls. So then I started thinking, now why would none of these guys be returning a phone call? Well, it just kind of dawned on me. The local paper mill closed this year, which was probably the biggest log buyer in the area i have a feeling our logging companies are in the middle of a a crisis i guess you can say now, we do have a few sawmills and so forth but that paper mill definitely consumed the majority of the a lot of the wood in this area so through much searching, I found a guy who only sells logs for firewood. So it's that's all he sells to. But he doesn't do it by the triaxle load. He does it differently. They're smaller loads. Um, I'm guessing two cord loads of logs uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. But I got an idea. Because I'm thinking about going with this guy 
and it might actually work out in my favor. So let me show you my idea. You're gonna get to see the back of my house here. Alrighty, so this is the back of my house and that's it. That's how much property I have. That's it. So whenever you see me out back here doing the log testing or doing the saw testing, it's usually happening right there where we got the car parked. You see the sawdust? Now this car is up for sale. We just, uh, we just bought a big old minivan, you know, the family's growing. So we switched it up to a van and now the trailblazer is up for sale. Yep, we got a minivan. <laughs> now here's the firewood trailer. You see, we got some wood on there. I'll burn that up here as soon as the winter comes or we might burn it up just from camping. But we also got the camper sitting over here. See that? It's a little solar powered trickle charger for the battery. Works pretty good. But I'm thinking about throwing them logs right here. The fence is pretty much shot. It's if you touch it, it's about to fall over. So it needs replaced. And this might be a good opportunity to do it and build one that's kind of extra reinforced. Thinking about kicking it on back into the yard about six, maybe ten feet. Give me more room out here. But I'm thinking of kicking it back. That way I can park the two trailers in front of each other. You know what I mean? And then I'd have the other side for the logs. You know, I don't have much space here. You know, that blue one's me. I don't have much room here. Another option is to replace the fence and to put like a door in, not a big enough door to pull the trailer one up into the yard. One or the other. I don't know which way I'm going to go. But this would save me from... It's, it's a 90-minute drive out to where I normally do my firewood work. Uh, 90 minutes round trip. So this would save me that 90-minute round trip to do all my firewood work. You know what I mean? That adds up when you're doing a half a quarter at a time on this trailer. That comes out to about 12 to 15 trips per season. Just to give you an idea. Do the math. It's a lot of time, a lot of gas, and I can eliminate all of that just by moving the logs to here. I don't know if the neighbors are liking me too much, but you know, I can probably cut a, I could probably cut two cord worth of logs in an hour or so. So I don't think the neighbors will care much. Look at my, my wife's head poking up over there waving. <laughs> this is my idea. So I just uh, I just contacted that guy again just to kind of check in. And he told me um, he's he's not pulling logs just yet, but he said he's gonna start at the end of next month. So that will give me roughly 30 days, maybe more, 30 to 60 days, I think, until we start having logs dropped. So I haven't been, I haven't been doing salt testing because I need wood. And this guy is telling me in another 30 days here or so, I can have a load of logs sitting. It ain't gonna be a gigantic load, you know, just little micro loads. He said they're about 10 to 14 feet long. Uh, he does excavation work. And these are trees that he comes across, you know, during his work and he's gotta clean up. You know, you know, I, I, I don't blame him. Perfect way to get rid of that wood, you know? I'll use it. I was even talking to him, he, uh, <laughs> he's a chainsaw guy too, but he, he's a husky guy. I'm not a husky guy. I'm a, I know a lot of you guys might be, but I think it's pretty obvious I'm not a husky guy. <laughs> but I think I might be able to uh, move forward with the wood and put it right here at the house. 
Do it 90 minutes a trip. 10 trips is 900 minutes. Do the math at 10 trips. Do it at 20. This is probably more like 20 because you always end up going out and saying, oh man, the log spitter broke or, you know, the chainsaw broke or something and you have a wasted trip. So it could easily hit 20 trips. It's a lot of time, you know. Just in drive time alone, I could probably have all the wood cut and split and ready to go just by just in that drive time so I'm having a real hard time finding a reason not to move forward with this you know tell me what you think alrighty give me some ideas later